a huge figure in Sydney's underworld, both in stature and reputation. Police allege he's played a significant role in the growing violence in Sydney's tit-for-tat gangland war as the second in command of the Alamedine crime clan. After evading law enforcement and slipping out the country, many thought they would never see him back on Australian soil. This is the story of Masood Zachariah. Masood is a huge player in Sydney's underworld and the second in command of the Alamedine clan who have long been a major force in Western Sydney. Crime families have been at war in Sydney over turf, drug contracts and status for more than a decade. This underworld war has spilled out onto the streets of Sydney with drive-by shootings and broad daylight executions which has resulted in the death and imprisonment of members on all sides. The Alamedines have been linked to an escalating bloody gang conflict involving over 13 fatal shootings in Sydney since 2020. Most on the streets of the southwestern suburbs and involving members of the rival Hamzi family. Masood has been instrumental in running the operations of the Alamedine crime clan and is the right hand man to kingpin Rafat Alamedine. Masood is also considered to be the driving force and organiser behind a lot of the murders of members of the Hamzi family. Just quickly, I want to say thank you to all the subscribers and everybody who's been watching the videos. Your support has really helped the channel grow. And if you are new here, please do consider subscribing and liking this video, it really helps me out. The Hamzi clan is led by crime boss Bassam Hamzi, though he's orchestrated most of his business behind bars. Bassam Hamzi was sentenced to 21 years in prison in early 1999 for a string of serious crimes including drug supply, murder and conspiracy to murder. Though this didn't seem to hinder Bassam Hamzi, he allegedly operated a drug empire from his Goldburn Supermax cell. Due to multiple charges since his initial arrest, he will not be eligible for parole until at least 2035. Though it's believed the Alamedine organised crime network will be on top in Sydney's underworld gang war for the foreseeable future, this is due to many of the senior members of the Hamzi clan either being killed or arrested. In an effort to slow down the workings of the Alamedine clan, police hit Masood with a serious crime prevention order in December 2020 in a bid to limit his influence on the criminal network. He was banned from associating with certain members of the Alamedine group. Though it was in 2021, Masood really found himself in the spotlight. On the 14th of August 2021, police foiled a plot to kill gangland rival and Bassam Hamzi's cousin, Ibrahim Hamzi, when they tried to stop a stolen Mercedes in North Sydney that investigators say was to be used for the crime. The driver of the stolen Mercedes had stopped in a no parking zone which attracted the attention of local police. The men in the stolen Mercedes allegedly sped off in a panic, sparking a high speed police chase and the assassination of Ibrahim Hamzi was aborted. Police believe Masood was the one who organised the attempted hit, though do not believe he was in the stolen vehicle. Police decided it was time to take Masood off the streets. On the 15th of December 2021, police raided Masood's home with intentions of arresting him on charges of conspiracy to murder Ibrahim Hamzi. Though Masood was nowhere to be found, police believe he became aware of their intentions to arrest him and fled, leaving his wife and children behind. Several days earlier, on the 8th of December, police raided Masood's father, Omar Zachariah's home, under a search warrant targeting the alleged ill-gotten gains of Masood. During the raid, officers uncovered $200,000 in cash, 30 pieces of jewellery and 210 precious gemstones during the search. Police charged Omar, alleging in court that the stash was the spoils of the criminal activity of Masood. The court heard police found $150 in cash in a black duffel bag at the bottom of a cupboard in one of Omar's bedrooms, while more money was found in two safes, a suitcase and a padlocked room at the rear of the house. Police discovered Masood's DNA on the black duffel bag, but not his father's. Omar told police he knew of the bag's existence, but did not know what was contained inside and had not dealt with it. In the end, the court could not be satisfied beyond reasonable doubt that Omar knew the $150,000 was in the duffel bag or that he had dealt with it. 
Omar Zakaria was found not guilty on two counts of dealing with proceeds of crime and one count of having suspected unlawfully obtained goods in his custody. However, New South Wales police were not going to stop there. Masood's six bedroom home was impounded after his wife Azza Zakaria was charged with faking the documents to secure their home loan for the property back in 2019. Police found Azza fraudulently declared an income of $240,000 on loan documents to buy the $1.5 million house in 2019. The annual proceeds of Az's self-employed role in childcare alerted suspicions as she holds no registered childcare qualifications and is married to a notorious crime boss. Masood allegedly directed his wife to fake a series of documents about her annual income and employment history to obtain the loan. Azar pleaded guilty to one count of dishonestly obtaining advantage by deception. She was sentenced to a 12-month community correction order for her part in the scheme. Between January and February 2022, police continued the hunt for Masood at addresses in the CBD and on the Central Coast, though it's understood he was spending time hiding out in Melbourne. In March, Masood is believed to have travelled to Perth in Western Australia and caught a fishing trawler to Malaysia using a fake passport. From Malaysia, he then made his way to Turkey. Once in Turkey, Masood met up with fellow high-ranking underworld figure and Alamedine associate Murat Galassi. Murat had moved to Turkey several months earlier after surviving a drive-by shooting in November 2021. Murat and his friends were outside the World Gym in Prospect when a flurry of bullets flew past them. Murat was shot in the leg, but nobody was killed. What's even more terrifying is that next door to the gym is a child's daycare centre. It can be seen on CCTV, stray bullets from the drive-by shooting came within centimetres of the toddlers in the daycare centre as bullets flew over their heads into the wall. This shooting shows how reckless and violent these gangs are. Several men were arrested by police and charged over the attempted hit, including gang rival Ibrahim Hamzi. In September 2022, while training at a gym in Turkey, Murat suffered a fatal heart attack and passed away. After landing in Istanbul, Masood made his way to Bodrum, where it's reported he was joined by fellow underworld figures and family and was living the high life. It's also believed while in Turkey, he maintained contact with members of the Alamedine clan via electronic messaging and still had significant involvement in the group's operations. Turkey has long been viewed as a safe haven for exiled Australian criminal figures trying to escape law enforcement. With the likes of Comanchero boss Mark Buddle and drug kingpin Hakin Ayak hiding out there. However, the good times never last long when you're on the run. Masood had attempted to apply for Turkish citizenship, though through this process his application matched an Interpol alert. An Interpol red notice was issued for Masood in 2022, meaning authorities all over the world were actively looking for him to provisionally arrest. The red notice included Masood's photograph and fingerprints. On January 28, 2023, police swooped in at midnight and arrested Masood in his luxury Turkish villa in the district of Bodrum. Also in the villa was Masood's family and 10 bodyguards. The police also found hundreds of thousands of dollars in cash and multiple weapons in the villa. Local media claim Turkish special forces received information Masood was on the move and planned to leave Turkey any moment by boat. Police said there was intelligence that he was heading to an African country. After being arrested, Masood was taken to a local prison facility for several days before he was transferred to a maximum security facility in Ankara. In March 2023, Masood faced a Turkish court hearing where the Australian Federal Police pushed for him to be extradited back to Australia. Though, sources said Masood's legal team pushed for him to be sent to Afghanistan where he's a dual citizen instead of Australia. However, authorities feared once there he would likely try and make his way to Lebanon where his wife and children and good mate Rafat Alamedine were all currently living. The request to be deported to Afghanistan was denied and Masood was held by Turkish authorities. After months of waiting, in December 2023, almost exactly two years after he fled the country on a fishing boat and with a false passport in his pocket, his time in Turkey came to an end. 
Masood was put on a plane and deported all the way back to Darwin, Australia, the same route Mark Buddle returned to Australia. Masood's extradition back to Sydney was granted at Darwin local court. As he was being escorted through Sydney airport by police, Masood was seen smiling at reporters. After touching back down in Sydney, Masood was taken to Surrey Hill Police Station where he was charged with 11 serious and violent offences. The Australian Federal Police state they have a long-standing relationship with the Turkish National Police and what is evident is that the Turkish authorities have no tolerance for transnational serious organised crime operating in their country. Australians who think they can hide offshore in perceived safe havens and avoid facing Australian courts for their alleged crimes need to heed this warning. The Australian Federal Police is relentless in our pursuit to ensure you face justice. Let me know what you think below. As always, if you've made it this far, thank you so much for watching. Till next time, take care.